encore episode of a animal that we did, I think in the first season of Animal Chat Time, but for some reason, the magical mystery internet didn't record it. So we are redoing it. It is my second shot at this. Uh, hopefully I will have all the answers because I've now researched fireflies for like four hours. I am now a firefly-ologist. Um, I'm sure that's what they're called. So let's get into it. Let's learn about fireflies. They are super weird and super interesting, like all the animals that we talk about. So first of all, a firefly is not a fly. This is an important thing to know. A firefly is actually a beetle. Some of them do fly, uh, and that's why we call them fireflies, but beetles. So we will cast our, our uh, imaginations to beetle rather than to fly. There are more than 2,000 different species of fireflies. They're found in tropical and temperate areas. And so they're found in jungles. They're found in North America, where it's not like the high Arctic. We find them in forests and fields, um, marshes, lakes, rivers, streams. Not in the rivers and streams, but around rivers and streams. They have to have um, some foresty bits, they have to have some grassy bits, and they have to have some water to live. So all of these places, like jungles and forests, the boreal forest, for example, where I know some people live close to, um, uh, the fireflies prefer warm and moist areas um, for reasons we will get into later, basically, their fire. Um, uh, but the fireflies in the wild are actually decreasing because of light pollution. Lack of darkness prevents their communication. And so we'll talk about this later, why they light up and what that means. But basically, it's a form of communication. And it's them finding a mate to or partner to mate with. And so if they can't talk to each other, if they can't uh, find someone to lay eggs with, fertilize eggs, then um, they can't have babies. And if they can't have babies, there's less uh, adults later. Um, so really important to think about um, turning off our lights, not having so many lights around at night, at dusk. Um, but again, let's just, let's get into why they're so cool and they're important. So first, a group of fireflies is either called a swarm or a sparkle. I prefer sparkle. I think that is adorable. Um, I went down a rabbit hole looking at this and groups of animals, the names of them I think are always lovely. Like a group of butterflies is a kaleidoscope and a group of um, hummingbirds is some kind, sometimes called a bouquet and sometimes called a mosaic. So like lovely, right? So, you know, a group of fireflies, a sparkle. I think it's just really lovely. Uh, fireflies use their light, um, use light in a bioluminescence way. And so what that means is they, in their body, create light. It's not something that they like, they pick up fire and like, hey, hello, everybody. It is in their body. Biologically, they make this light. And we'll talk about how it works and, and how cool it is. Oh, literally cool. We'll come back to that. Um, it's at the very bottom of their abdomen or their thorax because they are insects uh, and they communicate with their friends. Other names for fireflies. So firefly beetle, if you want to be, oh, wow. See, yeah, light at the end of their thorax. Very good. Um, so also some people call them glow worms. In Australia, there are glow worms, but that is described, that is for actual flies. Um, that have like that are fungus gnats that also have violent luminescence. So here's kind of like a weird thing. If you're in North America, you call a firefly a firefly, but it's a beetle. If you are in Australia, you call a firefly a glowworm, but it's actually a fly. Try not to get confused. It's very straightforward. Don't worry. Anyway, <clears throat> so we are just talking about the fireflies of North America, Asia, jungle, and things like that, sort of what we know them to be. People also, also call them glowflies, moon bugs, lightning bugs, golden sparkler, fire devils, a zillion other things. Um, but I just loved fire devils. These little guys, they're so little. So they are invertebrates, they are insects, they're omnivores, they eat both um, uh, animals and plants. Their lifespan is as adults about two months, 
but we're going to get into sort of what that means because they actually can live one or two years, but as adults, 15 months and their size up their size is about one inch again there's 2,000 different types of fireflies but most of them are just like little beetle friends um, they live in humid regions in Americas Asia things like that they feast on oh look at that sparkle lovely oh yeah I like how like the orange was orange and then the uh, the blue was blue everywhere is blue. And that's good because they do come out at dusk so they can chat with each other. Um, you'll see fireflies throughout the day uh, living their lives, but it's at dusk when they start to flicker at each other and it is kind of dark that they can communicate. So they feast on plant pollen and nectar. Um, adults do if adults have mouths. Wait, what? Yes, some adults don't even have mouths. So remember when we talked about salmon and when the salmon spawn, they don't eat anything. Their whole life at that point is just getting to their home region to have babies. Uh, fireflies are kind of the same thing. When they become adults, they're like, my job is to find a partner, to lay eggs, to have those eggs be fertilized. I just want to be a parent. And so sometimes they do eat a little bit of pollen. Um, they have a little bit of nectar. They're very important pollinators, but other ones uh, don't have mouths at all. They don't even think about eating. They do nothing at all, nothing at all. And so evolutionarily, they just, when they're adults, they don't have mouths because they don't have to talk to each other. They blink, uh, <laughs> their butts blink at each other. So they don't have to talk and they're not eating. So why have a mouth, which is kind of Kind of interesting. Firefly larvae, um, when they hatch out of their eggs, they're kind of like little, little, they look like small worms, but that's what we call, uh, that's what we call glow worms because they look kind of like worm things, sort of like little caterpillars. Um, when they haven't fully developed, they don't have wings yet, they'll eat other worms, snails, insects, anything that comes along. They are very hungry little friends. So, Fireflies use their light mostly to talk to each other and to find a mate. So they have really special organs in their abdomen. And what happens is the organs, the, the very bottom, their butts, we'll just call it that, uh, the very bottom of the abdomen takes in oxygen. So when it takes in oxygen, it combines with a substance that's an enzyme that's called uh, luciferin. And so uh, kind of like the illumination um, enzyme, we can call it. So that combines the, the luciferin uh, combines with oxygen and calcium, and that is what produces the light. So what is actually super interesting or cool about it is it produces no heat at all. So when we turn on a light in our house, well, we mostly don't have these types of lights anymore. But when we turn on a light in a house, um, when there's fire around, it's warm. It creates a lot of energy. It is very hot. You don't want to touch fire, obviously. You shouldn't touch a light bulb for a lot of reasons. But you could, if a firefly let you, you could touch a firefly and you wouldn't go like, oh gosh, I'm super hot. And a firefly wouldn't um, turn on its light and go like, oh yeah, that's hot. But uh, evolutionarily, they have figured out a way that they can have light in their body and they don't combust. It would be not a good ride if the way they talk to each other also makes them explode into fire. It's not great. It wouldn't be good for um, any species. And so the chemical reaction is actually very similar to if you've ever had like a glow stick that you have to like crack and then it glows, but it's not hot at all same thing. So it's very, very interesting. And scientists have actually learned a whole lot about like glowing and light and imagery and things like that based on the fact that these tiny little fireflies, these little beetles can make light, but they don't create heat. They don't, uh, they're not dangerous, which is pretty interesting. So it's just calcium, um, luciferin and oxygen that gets shaken together and light. So it's pretty cool. Each firefly, 
firefly species, remember there's 2000 of them, um, have their own unique flashing pattern. So when a male wants to communicate with a female firefly, he will fly around and depending on what species it is, he'll flash every like one to six seconds. Sometimes they'll double flash, things like that. Most females actually can't fly. So the females will be on blades of grass or on a tree or on branches, and they will look around at these flying, flashing male fireflies and be like, huh, yeah, that one's pretty cool. Hello, and will flash back. So they're flashing back, then the male firefly is like, oh yes, this one is compatible with me. We should make, uh, we should fertilize our eggs together and, um, and make babies. And so it's pretty interesting that way that there's just like a lot of fireflies. This is why you see lots of fireflies flashing a lot when they're in the sky um, or like above the ground because those are male fireflies trying to find a mate and say like, ah, who, who's around? What's going on? What's, what's going on here? So, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so remember when we talk about predators or prey, predators are constantly trying to eat things and prey are constantly trying to not get eaten. So predators like birds or toads or bats or things like that will see these lights and they will go, oh, no, thank you. I do not want that. They do not look at it and go like, oh, there is a flying insect. I'm going to eat it. Now, what? Why do they see light? And oh, wow, Tula, that is lovely. I just love the colors that everyone uses. These are so nice. So it's very easy to spot a firefly, obviously, but what happens, fireflies have a little bit of toxicity in them, and that tiny little bit of toxicity tastes very bad. And so predators will eat, they will like bite into the larva or, um, or into an adult. They will have a little bit of a bite and they'll go, oh, that tastes terrible. And if something tastes that bad in the wild, generally it's because it's toxic. And so the predators will have a little bit of blood from these animals and go, oh, that must be toxic and they'll spit it out. There's actually been some really interesting studies that people thought maybe bats were eating, um, eating fireflies. And so these uh, scientists went out and were watching fireflies and watching bats and the bats would go around the fireflies and be like, oh, no, thank you. I do not want that. Newer bats that hadn't learned this lesson yet would fly into a firefly, um, uh, put it in its mouth. The firefly would have a little bit of uh, toxic, not good tasting blood. And the bat would spit the firefly out and be like, oh, no, no, not today, firefly. I don't want to get toxicity in me. So it's kind of interesting because so much of the time as a as an animal who is considered prey you want to just blend in you want to be camouflage but these uh these animals are just like i do not need to be camouflage i can shine i can be a sparkle all i want because all the animals that tried to mess with me no i do not taste good i could be toxic and so it is a bitter kind of toxic chemical that like that just tastes bad it's a steroid that's in their blood and they don't have enough of it that they are actually toxic they just trick animals into thinking that they're toxic and so things like jumping spiders and birds and things like that will take a bite and go oh no thank you um now the lightning bud bugs fireflies oh that looks so good i love i love the pink um so not all uh, fireflies actually have this steroid in their blood, which is also kind of cool. Some of them don't need to produce it anymore because all animals that have tried to eat something that's flashing, that have tasted it, have been like, oh, yeah, no, 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 thank you. I don't want that. Now, it's actually called reflex bleeding, which is kind of neat. And so uh, the animal, uh, uh, we'll say like a bat, put a firefly in their mouth they don't actually crunch it yet. The firefly will reflex bleed, go like, oh, oh here, here's some, some things that taste bad. And so the bird or the lizard or the bat or whatever it is will taste it and be like, oh, no, thank you, and spit it out. And so I think that is just 
super, super interesting, especially if they're not truly toxic. You could, if you were a bat and very hungry, you could um, keep on biting and keep on eating it and being like, this is so terrible and it's really bad and you would survive. But the bats have not learned that yet. They just know this tastes bad, should probably not mess with it. Um, a large group of fireflies will sometimes blink in unison, and this is called synchronicity, which like just sounds so pretty and so lovely that you're walking through a forest and everything is blinking at the same time. Scientists don't actually 100% know why they do this, because if you're blinking at the same time, if all the males are blinking at the same time, then the females, there's no reason for them to choose one over the other. So it's just... Um, lovely. Sometimes nature is just lovely and we do not know. Um, firefly eggs can also glow. So all of the animals in the, um, in the life cycle of fireflyness, all of them glow. The eggs, the larvae, the adults. And this happens because all through their, all through their life cycle, they're trying not to get eaten. And so the eggs, if you find firefly eggs that are very, very, very small, they are like a quarter of an inch that I am being told is about the, my fingernail. <laughs> if you see them and you tap around them, then that tapping creates the chemical reaction of, uh, of the enzyme of the uh, oxygen and the calcium, and that will create a glow. And so the animals that know glowing and, uh, and bright colors means toxic, means ugh, and I could get sick, look at that and go, oh, I am not going to eat that today. And so it's a way to protect themselves, even though they're just a little egg. They're not, they're not thinking about doing it. They are not trying not to get eaten. They are just being an egg. And the vibrations go like boop boop boop, which is so neat. So not only do they use bioluminescence to, to find a mate when they're older. They use it to protect themselves when they are younger. Which like, how cool is that? Um, also the flashing can startle predators. If you are, um, uh, if you are an animal that doesn't want to uh, be burnt in fire, you know that light uh, very often is heat and heat is scary and we don't want that. And so if you are a frog walking past all of these um, eggs and you see them light up, you go up, oh, that might be fire and you run away. So again, it's like, it's very, so clever, such a little animal. This is, the, this is how there's more than 2000 species. And this is how they've been on earth for so long. They're just very good at protecting themselves. Oh, wow. That looks great. So many good colors. So uh, fireflies can be, oh, the, the fire, actually, the fire um, can be yellow, which I've seen everyone color, which is great. Orange, I've also seen that, but also green, which is pretty neat. It's just a mixture of the different chemicals. Sometimes they just glow a lot more green than other ones do. It's based on the species. And so we see a lot more like greeny blues in, in Southeast Asia and things like that, and more like yellows and oranges in North America. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have maybe a firefly in my throat. Probably not. So what, what do they eat? What on earth? Fireflies are, they are omnivorous. Oh, so many different good colors. Fireflies are omnivorous, but mostly they're carnivorous. Like, let's be honest. Some of them eat pollen. Some of them eat, um, uh, uh, nectar and sugar water, but most of them, when they're larva, they eat snails, they eat worms. Sometimes they eat other fireflies. Um, <laughs> they eat uh, squishy bugs and hard bugs. They just want to eat all the possible things that they can eat. Um, when they get older, again, we're oh wow, those look so good. Everyone's drawings are just so excellent. And so many different colors and so many different. Um, um, so much imagination. I love it. So because some fireflies don't have mouths at all, they don't eat. And some of them just have like a proboscis, like we saw the moths have or butterflies. And so they eat a little bit of nectar, but eh, not, not really. They're just doing all of the eating when they are younger. So how long do fireflies live? This is an excellent question. This was a question that I was a little bit confused about. They live as adults 
for about two months outside of their pupil casing. Um, so they, well, let's talk about that first. So their eggs, they hatch in, oh, there are some questions from Tula and Leaf. Absolutely. Uh, how do we unmute? Is I, I, I think they can hear you. Is it unmuted? Can we? Yep. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Absolutely. So my question was, can you show me some pictures of fireflies? Very um, soon. All right. Definitely. Yeah, we're, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the life cycle so we kind of understand how old they get. And then we're going to get into some pictures and you will see that your, your drawings are very similar to how they look. Uh, Tula, you have a very important question. Um, do you be, um, I made some green on mine. Yeah, you have a little bit of green. That one looks like it's probably from like Southeast Asia with like all of its like pinks and blues and purples and a little bit of green. Oh, Birch, that one looks really good too. And see, all of you are coloring them. Oh, Leaf, awesome. Yeah, all of you are coloring them like very, very well because like maybe intuitively you know this or maybe you've just seen tons of fireflies, but their abdomens or thoraxes are lots of different colors and they are all very spectacular, but it's only really the last segment of their abdomen that does light up. So you're all doing it perfectly. Chef's kiss, but like not a chef because we don't eat fireflies. Uh, <laughs> nothing should eat them. Um, so the life cycle is very interesting. The eggs hatch. Um, it, so the eggs will sit sometimes for a whole season, sometimes over winter. Sometimes they just are really sitting and like growing into animals. Um, in about four weeks, the larva comes out and then the larva will um, stay underground over winter. So <clears throat> they go underground, they live on worms and slugs and snails and other things. And then sometimes, depending on the species, they'll have another year as larva um, uh, underground. So they're not just like little larva, they're getting big, 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 big. As spring arrives, um, the firefly larva will pupate. So exactly like what happens with moths and um, uh, uh, butterflies, they go into like a pupil sack and they wait, 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 wait. Um, it depending, again, depending on the species, it can take sometimes two months, sometimes it can take a week, sometimes a little less, a little more. Uh, they turn into the beetles that we know. So they go from sort of caterpillars to beetles. Um, and then they devote all of this time to like making and developing wings if they are a male firefly. These wings are so they can like fly around and fly and find uh, a female. Now the pupil stage for like some of them can even last only 10 days. And then the entire cycle is generally one to two years. So they are an animal on earth for one or two years and they are an adult for about two months. Uh, which is why they don't really have to like eat when they're adults because they've eaten for the year and a half of their life. Um, now, the last kind of cool thing is I found out about this firefly that is called a femme fatale, which I'm not sure as a feminist I love, but it's fine. What they do is they lure unsuspecting males um, to their death. What? Why would they do this? Well, they have earned this nickname because they like, they as adults eat. So they're, they definitely have mouths. They definitely are carnivores. And what they do is they mimic the flashing pattern of toxic fireflies. They eat the toxic firefly males, and then they mate with their own males and the toxins that they get from these other males, they put into their eggs as a chemical defense. So they cannot make these toxins on their own, but they want to protect their babies. And so what they do, and sometimes, sometimes they'll lure the toxic males over, eat them, take their toxins and put them in the eggs, or they will sneak onto spider webs and they will steal the spider, the, the prey of the spiders. And that is how they will get the toxin. So this is called um, kleptoparasitism. 
parasitism. That is a $4,000 word. Um, but basically they are parasites and they steal. So it's, it's really super, super interesting. So they can identify, oh, that is a great drawing. Oh, good work, buddy. Birch, that looks great. Um, but yeah, so they, they can identify the incapacitated prey. They go on to the spider web, they eat the prey, and then that is how they protect their young. So again, I just think like we can call them femme fatales, but they're doing this for their kids. They are trying to make sure that their, their eggs, their kids survive as long as possible. And I just think that is, that is a mother's love, you know, going into a spider web eating a toxic male and making sure that your children survive. I think that's what all moms would do. So let's look at some, um, um, I'm going to show you some pictures, but for some reason I can't, oh, there it is. I'm just bad at things. So, um, Okay, um, I cannot see you anymore for some reason, but Dana, can you see fireflies on the screen? You'll have to unmute. For some reason, I can't see anything. We can see you, Nora. We can see Amazing. You. We can see the screen, yes, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay, that's perfect. Um, yeah, who knows? I would love to tell you I'm good at technology, but I'm better at animals. So fireflies. So this is amazing. These are two little fireflies. And remember, the glowing that is from their abdomen is not warm at all. So they are not in danger of combusting, of, of going on fire, but also they're not damaging the plants at all that they're at. Um, these could be male or female, we don't know. Um, but we know that they could be female because they're not flying. And remember, female uh, fireflies typically do not fly. Um, but they are lovely colors, just like Tula showed us with the pink and blue firefly with a bit of green. This one has some pink on it. They have these little tiny lovely hands and you can tell um, that they are beetles. They're not flies. They have this lovely exoskeleton and lovely um, uh, casings around them. And this is just a beautiful picture. So there's not this many fireflies in this forest. This is like a time, uh, a, a time released. Sure, uh, this is a long exposure photograph, but it does show you at the very top left, you can see um, the path that a firefly was, um, was flying. Um, and you can just see like how often they can like turn on and off and on and off. The other thing about not creating heat when this chemical reaction is happening and they're glowing, it means that they're not, um, it, it doesn't cost them a lot of energy. So they can turn it on and off again, and it's not going to, it's not gonna wear them out. The flying um, and looking for a mate is the thing that makes them tired. It's not this chemical reaction that is, is happening. Here's another picture of, this is probably one or two fireflies, and this is just uh, the male fireflies, as you can tell, because they're flying around, just going through a forest, and how, how beautiful it is to see fireflies. Here's another lovely firefly, lots of um, uh, pinks and reds, and you can see the very end of the abdomen is the only part that it, uh, it glows. And you can see that it has the wings, sort of like a, a um, not a hummingbird, that's totally wrong, a ladybird or um, a ladybug. It has the very delicate, lovely wings underneath its, um, its sort of like beetle body. So, you know, we used to think that they were maybe flies and then we're like, oh, but it looks more like a beetle. No, it's just a flying beetle. And so those are my firefly pictures. But as you know, as I saw from everyone, your coloring and your drawings were actually like very close to what I was showing you. Um, Birch, it seems to me that you have a question. Does anything eat fireflies? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we don't actually know. 
so far in science, we don't think anything does eat fireflies. Things try to eat fireflies because they're like, oh, look at this beetle in the air. It must be delicious. But then they take the bite or they, they put the beetle in their mouth and the beetle knows that it is in danger. And so it does the reflex bleeding. And when it reflex bleeds, it has that... Um, that steroid that tastes bad. So the animal goes, oh, I don't want it and spits it out because they think it might be totally toxic and they'll get like a tummy ache. So, so far right now, the only thing that eats fireflies are other fireflies and some spiders, but spiders generally go, I'm gonna eat something else that doesn't taste bad. Most animals just want to have things that taste good like us. You have a follow-up question. I I was wondering if there, what is the biggest thing that a firefly would eat? Mm, so the biggest thing a firefly would eat would probably be when it is a larva, it would probably eat another big larva because they, they can't really move that fast. And so they would eat something as big as it and just kind of like, hunker down so if they are like the size of like my thumbnail then they would eat something else that's the size of their, their thumbnail but it would also have to be in like a larval stage because they don't fight each other they're kind of just like they just burp 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 oh food yum 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 burp 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 food yum 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 <laughs> leaf kind of like that but like more Squishy. Which makes me think we have to know the uh, dance for fireflies. Now I think with fireflies, it has to be something to do with fire and with sparkles and with kind of like twinkling. So I think we should be a bunch of fireflies, not just one unique sentient being. We should be a whole sparkle of them and we should twinkle. Oh yeah, with like a headlamp. Yeah, we could twinkle on and off and just, you know, your little firefly dance. It's very, ah, oh, very, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, yep. <laughs> Birch, just like that. Woo, woo. And yeah, Tula and Leaf, yep. Yeah, you guys are like in like a mosh pit of sparkles and I love that too. I love all the energy. Remember, there's like, the, you know, they're twinkling, but they're also twinkling and being like, I'm toxic. I'm going to steal something from like another one. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's lovely. So yeah, it can, it can very much be if we need to have like a calm dance that we're calm. But if we need to like get our sillies out, it can be an aggressive get our sillies out twinkle dance, which I think sometimes we need to do both. So that was fireflies. Thank you so much, everyone. That was super fun. I'm really happy that I could research them again because I just learned so much more. I remember the first time reading, they didn't have mouths and I was like, that's weird. Anyway, let's talk about something else. And I could really focus on like, what is an animal if it doesn't have a mouth? Um, Birch, you have a final question. What if they, nothing eats them, and is the, what is their, what is their purpose? Oh, that is a philosophical question for all of us <laughs> because nothing eats humans and we have a purpose too. So I think they would argue their purpose is just to make more. There are some that pollinate. So their purpose would be like pollination. Um, and then when, um, uh, when fireflies die, um, they're very small, but everything is part of the circle of life, right? So every firefly that dies has a little bit of nutrients that goes back into the soil and is, um, and, and helps the, um, I was going to say the microbiome. We can say that the microbiome of, um, of the forest. So their purpose is like to just be like a small but very important part of everything and to be beautiful. Sometimes things just look beautiful and isn't that like a lovely purpose even when you are kind of toxic. <laughs>
that would be a funny joke when everyone gets older. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Um, we are very exciting. We are going to have more seasons of animal chat time. This is not the last one, but we're going to take a couple. Yay. <laughs> we're going to take a little bit of time off. Um, but then we are going to come back. We are going to, we're going to figure out a way that we can get you to vote on the animals. Cause I know we want to talk about spiders. We want to talk about snakes. We want to talk about bison. Tula, I found out that the scientific name for bison is bison, bison, bison. They're the most bison-y creatures of all of them. They're triple bison. So we are going to talk about that. It's super interesting. Um, we don't have dates yet. We don't have animals. We're going to figure it out. But we will be contacting um, your parents. And so we can all figure out what animals we want to learn about and um, shed, some, shed some light, not just from our butts, uh, shed some light on all animals. So thank you so much, everyone. I love animal chat time. It is so fun. And it was so great to have one of the first days of 2020 be sharing it with you, talking about animals.